Hey guys, so forgive me, this is going to be a little bit of a weird video because I actually shot all of this footage back in uh, December of 2018, but I never did anything with it. Um, mostly I just wasn't very pleased with how the mod itself came out and basically how the video even came out. Um, so yeah, forgive me, old desk, poor lighting, poor camera, uh, poor sound in some cases, but uh, yeah, just wanted to make a USB Type-C mod for an Xbox 360 controller, so let's go ahead and take a look. Today I want to talk about this uh, Xbox 360 wired controller USB-C mod that I've been working on with one of my buddies uh, on the Game Boy Disc card, Mr. Uh, HDR. Anyway, the idea is you take a wired Xbox 360 controller, uh, remove the USB cable, install a 3D printed bracket and a USB-C port. Basically, all you have to do is plug in any USB-C cable, either to a computer or an Xbox 360, and it should work. And it's reversible, and yeah, you can probably hear the computer chime in. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my phone back in, because it was charging. Uh, anyway, I did it with this specific controller because the cord itself was pretty nasty. It was kind of mangled and it was missing the little breakaway USB port part on the end. And this just seemed like an easier way to get it working. And then I ended up putting a new shell on it. And you know, it works great as is. But then my buddy HDR, he says, hey, instead of using a USB breakout board, why don't we make a PCB to make it a little bit easier? And so that's what I'm going to try and install today. I just got these fresh from Osh Park. They're kind of customized, but basically the idea is you solder on USB-C port and then you solder this straight to the board and you're good to go instead of having to fuss about with wiring up the, the uh, breakout board like I did originally. It's probably a little bit harder to to uh, set up because you need these USB-C ports here. Uh, I just bought them off of AliExpress. They're, you have to get the ones that straddle the edge of a board. You can kind of see that there. When soldering, I like to just stick them onto another cable. That gives me a little bit more leverage and then it just goes on to the end here like that. But first, these boards from Osh Park, even though they're nice and cheap, they have these little rough spots where they were joined together. Because how they form boards is they take, they basically make a whole bunch at a time, one big panel, and then these things are all connected up together. Like you can see this one still has the little chunks on it. They're connected up like that, so on and so forth, with a whole bunch of other customers' boards. But I like to just take a regular file. And this side, you need to file down, otherwise it won't fit in the USB port. Other board manufacturers probably don't do this. I don't know, I've ordered boards from like JLPCB and Elecro and whatnot, and I, I've never received a board that looks like this. But they're also quite a bit more expensive and you generally are ordering in higher capacities as opposed to Osh Park which is really good for prototypes and low quantities because like I said this this was three bucks shipped for all three of these boards just to make it make it pretty I like to file the other sides as well Pretty quick. It's just standard FR4 board material. And these are metal files, so they cut through it like butter. Alright, good enough. I'll put the file away. 
Shouldn't need that one anymore. Might need a round file in a bit though. All right, before I solder this in, I just wanna double check that it does actually fit properly because this is a prototype board, hence the A on there. Uh, this also includes breakout for the CC resistors in case you're hooking this up to a USB 3.0 host. If you're hooking it up to, or excuse me, a USB-C host, there is a difference. Um, USB-C hosts don't quite work the same way as a regular USB 3.0 or USB 2.0 host. Uh, the older style USB hosts just provide five voltage at, or five volts and take it or not, that's what you get. USB-C on the other hand can provide like five, nine, 15, 19, I don't know more than just five volts. And so how it works is you plug it in and then the device negotiates for the voltage that it wants. Uh, but this is designed to be a USB 2.0 device. And so it doesn't have the circuitry to negotiate. These CC or, um, you know, I actually forget what they stand for, what that stands for. Uh, anyway, they tell the USB-C host that this is a USB 2.0 device. And all you have to do is just solder um, I have it labeled on the board, 5.1K resistors uh, to both both lines. If you only do one, then it'll only work, you know, like this way and not reversed or so on. How, however it ends up working out. Anyway, probably hear that rustling. I ended up picking up one of these because I wanted to try out that this mod, you know, make sure this board works without taking apart my prototype here because my prototype is working just fine. This controller also probably working just fine, but I'm gonna take it apart anyway. I ended up picking it up from GameStop. Spent a little bit more than I wanted to. Get that out of the way, that's noisy and loud. But, you know, it's, I found it's actually kinda of hard to find these things in 2018, almost 2019. Uh, all the wired controllers seem to be either like third party or they're just not wired. So this is the part my other controller was missing. I know you can pick these up online, they're pretty cheap, but the whole purpose of the other controller was that it was five bucks as is and I didn't want to spend any money on it. Anyway, let's just double check that it's working. Plug it into my computer. Yeah, computer's happy. Light came on. Works for me. Okay. Unplug that. And now we gotta take this apart. Just wanted to make sure that it's working before I take it apart because you actually gotta break the little warranty seal just to take these things apart. Uh, but anyway, on the wired controllers, there is just seven Phillips screws, do I not have the right? I don't think I have the right screwdriver. It's probably way too big. I don't know, I'm trying out this new little set here. Yeah, there we go. All right, yeah, the wireless controllers have the same screws in the same position, except instead of Phillips, they are uh, security Torx bits. You can now the ironic thing with security Torx is they're actually pretty easy to take out with a flathead screwdriver. Or if the pin actually breaks off when you try doing that, you can just use a regular Torx. Nonetheless, this mod is only applicable to the wired controllers. And y'all saw, I just took this thing out of the casing. It's pretty gross. That's as is from GameStop. Don't you, don't you love getting other people's mystery hand cheese? Anyway, if I weren't doing this mod to this controller, I'd be taking it apart anyway to clean out the, uh, as I so eloquently put it, hand cheese. All right, so that's three, 
Five, six, missing one. Oh, it's still in the hole, that's fine. Sometimes they get a little bit stuck. That's okay. All right, so you just pop the back off. I'm gonna that screw out the hole so I don't lose it. And then this, put it aside. All right, so this is the part that we wanna pay attention to, or at least I want to pay attention to. I'm just gonna remove the rumble motors, leave them in the case so they're not dangling off this motherboard while I'm trying to work on it. All right, and now I'm gonna set this aside too, except I'm not gonna throw it. Okay. So this was the annoying issue with my my original controller. This is like a, a, a custom mold, I guess. So if you use any other wire, and this is molded to the wire itself. So if you use any other wire, there's gonna be a gigantic hole in the casing. That's what I get for putting the controller down. Okay. Like that. I don't like that. I think it's ugly. Uh, so my solution was to 3D print some, some bezels here. And these, I just printed two just in case I fucked the first one up. Uh, but these are fresh off the printer. I haven't done any cleanup on them whatsoever. I'll get to that in a minute though. First, I want to double check that this fits properly. Because the original design, I actually have one somewhere over here. This is the original 1.0. You can see it's it's straight instead of the curve. And so the port itself doesn't end up in the right place. Uh, I accidentally ordered these boards too thick, so they wouldn't work anyway. These are the standard 1.6 millimeter, but you need to get the 0.8 millimeter thickness boards. Anyway before I get distracted again. So that's gonna solder on there. That looks pretty damn close to center. And then you gotta get a port on there. Let me fire up the soldering iron, get this desoldered, and see what happens. I'm not 100% sure why they do this. Maybe it's just they were working with the parts they had, but they had uh, USB, 2.0 and 1.0 for that matter uh, are four wires voltage ground data plus data minus but the connector on the Xbox 360 controller is five wires and the fifth wire is just missing and there's even an extra hole to solder to but there's nothing in there I don't know why they do that like I said maybe it's just parts availability or something I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to try and rock this thing out. Oh, but this is that annoying lead-free high temp solder, so let me... Oh, that's probably not good. All I did was touch my computer. Whatever. Um, let me use some leaded solder on there. Delicious lead solder. I just bridged these two points, which would be a bad thing if I was not taking this apart. Okay, oops. Also just touched, you know what? I'm gonna take these off so I don't ruin them because they're actually in nice condition. Okay. And I'm just applying gentle pressure on the back. And there we go. I'm just going to set this aside for now in case I want to put it back together, which I might. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. Next, I need to use... Da, 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 da. You kidding me? This is why you should only make YouTube videos if you're uh, an organized person. Because I can't find my solder sucker. Whatever, the thing's a piece of junk. I'll just use solder wick. 
you need to get the rest of the solder out of these holes here. Put the wick on there. Ooh. Okay, then. Okay. Not perfect, but more than good enough. Okay. Now, set this aside. Get this in here. And yeah, when I'm soldering these, I just like to stick them onto a cable to give me a little bit more leverage. I think I already said that, but fuck it. You'll get two. Okay. And that just kind of slides on there. Make sure everything is lined up. I'm going to start by just soldering one of the anchors on one side. Maybe. I get my soldering iron in there. There we go. A little sloppy, but I'm planning on cleaning it up. Now, I'm going to take the board out, just kind of visually inspect that everything's lined up on both sides. And that is how it appears. So I'm going to start with the back, since there's already a solder joint on the front. You hear me rustling, I'm just getting some flux. And I'm still using that cheap brush on stuff. I'm afraid that in this case I would want to use that solder, that flux pen that I have, but uh, I'm afraid that if I try and apply flux with that, I'm going to end up knocking stuff out of alignment. Okay, and that is way more flux than I need, but that's okay. More is better in this case than less, at least. Make it a gab, better the job. Okay. Now I'm just going to throw a big solder blob on there and walk it across. Clean off extra solder. And there's probably a few shorts. Because that was a lot of solder. Actually, it went a lot better than I was expecting. And because I am not able to see that small. I'm going to try and use the magnifying glass on this thing. No, but with all the flux, it's hard to tell. Uh, I know. Let's use the wick. I'm going to cut a fresh section here. Looks good enough. Let's do the other side. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Cover that in flux. Use much less flux this time because it's already hot and it was kind of melting my flux down. That is going to work. 
just fine. Now it's probably easier to do these connectors in particular with something like hot air. That way you don't have to just douse them in flux and clean up. That looks good. Oh, framing, you fuck. Um, I don't know. It looks good, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna go clean up these this flux and I'm gonna get a I guess a breakout cable so I can check this with a multimeter before I plug it into anything and break something. I will be right back. And I'm back. Okay. I found let's get this out of the way, we don't need it anymore. Uh, I found this and some alligator clips, which should be all we need to test this out. Um first thing though, I was carrying that stupid thing around and set it down somewhere. I'll be right back in just a second. Okay. All right, so I got it cleaned up a little bit and by a little bit, I mean, hopefully all the way. Um, this is what I normally use for just testing that I've wired everything correctly because you don't really want to just assume you got it wired correctly and plug it in and blow out your fancy expensive device. It's just a USB 2.0 cable with a USB-C connector on the end and then the wires. Uh, I also have this connector right here. This is just a USB-C female breakout. Uh, well, I guess it's female. It's kind of weird how the receptacle works because I don't know, whatever. I'll leave that to another video. Um, this has all the ports pinned out on the back. This is what I used originally to wire up my first controller, but I'm just sitting there going with, you know, each individual wire connected up to the pads and it was kind of a pain in the ass. Anyway, we're going to use these to test it out. I'm just going to plug that in there. Use my alligator clip on, should probably strip these wires a little bit shorter. Get my multimeter again, just a cheap Chinese Harbor Freight special, but you know what? It works and it was free anyway. Okay, I have that clip to the green wire, which I believe is data plus, but I don't know which of these is that. But that's okay because it's that one. Yep, okay. Now I'm gonna clip this to the white wire which is the other one. No? Wait a second. Oh, I just had it backwards in my head. That's okay. That's okay. And then voltage should be this one, I believe. Yep. And not that. And then ground should be the last one here. Perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna flip this over. Make sure that it works the same on the reverse. It's entirely possible that, you know, like the front side got soldered just fine, but the back side didn't or something like that. Green is data plus and not data minus. 
for testing purposes, I suppose both sides should be labeled. Not just the bottom. Okay. I'm happy with that. Didn't even need the other alligator clip. Okay. Now, before I get this soldered into my controller, I need to get some header pins. Now, the nice thing about this uh, connector, even though it's not designed to come off, it's still a standard spacing. Um, what is it, like 2.54 millimeter or something like that? Uh, either way, it's standard spacing, so any header pins will work. Let me go grab some, and since I want to test out the USB-C host capability, I want to grab some resistors as well. I will be right back. So it turns out, in my infinite negligence, I never actually ordered those resistors that I need. So, I will go ahead and order those today, but in the meantime, I'm still going to go ahead and install this and see if it works. So I have these standard header pins. You just, you, you get how many you need and you break them off. This is only USB 2.0. I only need four. Ta-da. That's it. All right. So now, oh, before, one step before we solder this on, this is going to end up going in like that, but there's an extra step to it, so hang on. Um, we need to get this ready, because if this doesn't fit, that kind of defeats the whole purpose here. So that was just a skirt that my 3D printer printed. Uh, whenever you warm up your 3D printer, you always want to get a little bit of the material flowing before you actually start printing, because sometimes it just it takes a second. I had to print with the support really close to the material, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to remove, but should be fine. And I had to do that because of how uh, small this part is and because my printer sucks at printing overhangs. But I don't know, your mileage may vary. You might be might have a much better printer than me or you might be ordering this through a service in which case they'll do this part for you or you might not even want to use the bezel I don't know I'm still figuring out my 3d printer I've had it for a while but it's it's a uh, it's a process that's for sure all right clip all of this off Okay. Let's see if it fits. So it's going to fit into the bottom like this, or it's supposed to, but it's not going all the way down. The question is is it because it's not printed with the correct dimensions or? There's my files. Is it something else? That's not the file I meant to grab. Where's my curve? There it is. I think. It's hard to see on the camera, but there's a little bit. I'm not actually filing, I'm just using this as a poking tool, really. I mean, I suppose it is filing. Whatever, you know what I mean. Now I'm trying to file. Alright, let's 
still does not fit. What did I not count for? Oh. Okay. I'll have to fix that in the model. There's a spot where it doesn't quite line up. But the easy fix for that. There's this little uh, part that holds the bezel in. Just gonna clip it flush. And I'll fix the model so that the uh, going forward it fit. Oh, okay. Oh, that snapped. That's good. Good thing I printed two, right? So I printed this with blue PETG, uh, mostly because um, I like the uh, strength that PETG provides over something like PLA. Plus, I've noticed that over time PLA tends to get really brittle and start cracking, whereas PETG just cracks right off the bat. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I also printed with this material because that's just what I had in the printer. Probably going to need to print a third one. I foresee myself cracking this one too. The model that I mod modeled this after is the uh, little rubber part on the end here. So this is designed to be flexible but it's also designed with a round hole in it to fit a cable and not this big wide hole to fit the whole port. So maybe something like this would be better printed in like TPU or something. Instead of this hard rigid material. You know, it might also make this a little bit easier. Let me get that USB port to fit. I'm going to take one of my round files here because there's just some stringing in the port. Just use this to clean it out. designed to be a tight fit because originally I was hoping the 3d print would just hold it in place clearly that's not a good idea so I don't know what I have currently uploaded to my thingverse page I think it's like version 1.2 or whatever the hell I'm calling it. Version 1.3 shouldn't have these problems. <laughs> but then again, I originally only made it just as a one-off to fix my controller. I never intended to... make an actual usable product that people would want. I had no idea this was going to be a thing that other people were interested in. 
I ended up trimming a little bit of this interior bezel here so that this part, my 3D printed bezel, fits up flush with that. Uh, I tested it, it fits on the top as well. Uh, no trimming or filing necessary. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and solder this onto the board. Uh, hopefully the video caught me soldering this on. I went ahead and tested it out with this guy and a multimeter and everything seemed to work out. So anyway, gonna move on to soldering this down to the board. It says this side up, which means this side up. Anyway, I was told by my friend who made, made it that the plastic bit needs to go on top. So you need to solder it down this way with the, with the this side up part down. That's not a tongue twister, I don't know what is. But what I'm gonna do, just to give myself a little bit more room. Oh. Oh, oh. Seem to fit. oh, there we go. Cause I'm an idiot. Uh, I don't need the more, more room. That'll be fine. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you just take your standard breakaway header pin break off as much as you need. In this case, just four pins. And then solder it so that the short side and the plastic holding bit part on are on the uh, side that says this side up. So that's soldered down. You can kind of see what I did there. Anyway, now that this side is up, go ahead and pop this bad boy in here. You should have that, if you're holding the controller so the triggers are at the top, there should be that empty hole to the right there, just like on the original cable when this was soldered down. There were the four, and then that fifth one was empty. So that's how that goes. Then you gotta flip it over, make sure this side is up. You gotta flip it over and solder these down. But before I solder these down, I just wanna make sure I've got the positioning right. Or no, it should be flexible enough. I don't know, should bend. I'm just gonna solder it down, wing it, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen to me, right? This last one keeps trying to give me a cold joint. Let's try a wee bit of flux. There we go. That's beautiful. Yeah, might as well do the rest while there's a ton of flux. All right. That should be it. Probably want to trim these down. I'm going to go ahead and trim these flush. Uh, make sure you engage safety squints when doing that. Because these things will fuck off on you and ruin your day in a heartbeat. Alright. Good enough. So, I probably fucked something up. Let's see if it works. Just plug it straight into my computer. No, it doesn't. Interesting. It 
just got two green lights. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. Okay. Turn the soldering iron back on. You know, I did forget to clean up that flux. I hope that's not the issue. Actually, on second thought, I hope that is the issue because that's easy to fix. All right, now that I've got rubbing alcohol all over myself. That would go down like that, which means from the top we have voltage, data minus, data plus, and then ground, with the empty pin last. Which means, yeah, because that would be ground, data plus, data minus, and then voltage, with the empty pin on the bottom. It's wired correctly. So, multimeters in continuity mode. This one doesn't beep because it's one of them cheapo meters. Alright. So, I have it clipped to ground now. That should be ground. Indeed, it is. That should also be ground. None of these should be ground. Interesting. I hope that's normal. I hope that's also normal. Not a dead short. Ooh, that's very interesting. Let's wait, clip your test leads longer. I was gonna solder this down to something so I never actually clipped it properly. Voltage. See, there's almost a dead short. What the fuck? Let's get this thing desoldered and see what the hell's going on. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did for the cable. And, uh,. Touch my soldering iron to that again. Okay. But now I'm gonna just try and walk it across. All four connectors. One after the other. <laughs> That's not good. I'm going to need new headers. Oh well. Come on. Why aren't you coming out?
made it look so easy the first time. You know what? I don't know why I'm making this so damn difficult. I already need new headers. Just cut these Jesus things. Okay. That was some hot soda. Okay. Clean this up. Or I'll just do that like this. Got a two for with that one. Okay, that's cleaned up. That's why the solder sucker helps. You can get the uh, pins out too. That's still running. There we go. Just off screen, I have one of those like brass pads for cleaning the solder, soldering iron rather. get all the extra solder out of the hole so that when I go to re-solder this it's very easy mm -hmm. all right so all those traces look fine I didn't fuck anything up with my brute force oh, let's use the probe got two probes ground it's voltage see these aren't connected I don't know why they were connected yeah problem must have been something with my adapter wait wait a second did I have that right yeah I did well anyway this 
is ground. That should be ground. Oh, not. I'm sorry. That one. No? Okay, yeah, that one. Had it backwards. Okay. That should be ground. And with the adapter, it had like something like 6 ohm resistance. Alright, 600 ohm, 600 ohm. That's about right. That's ground, and that should be voltage. Yep. Mark the beast. Oh, now it's 6667. Whatever. Okay, so the problem is then is it my adapter or is it my soldering? I've noticed my connector is now weeble wobbling. That's probably a good sign. It is the connector. Whew, that's bad. All right, will this just come off? Let's just start with a new one. Start with one that doesn't have rears all over it. Or maybe it won't, because I only have two on my desk now. Okay. I'm going to waste all that time filing it down. Or maybe I'll have to for this part. Yeah, I just fucked that up. Major buzzkill when it doesn't work the first time around, am I right? Is it something you fucked up, not because. Just didn't put it together right or something? I don't know. Look at me saying I'm not going to waste all that time filing. I'm a dirty liar, ain't I? Alright. I'm not going to file the whole thing, I swear. Where's my wick? There it is. Oh, I need a port. Alright, now it doesn't matter which way the port goes on, these things are reversible. Slide it on there, make sure both sides are lined up. Indeed they are, again. Hold it down. Reconnect it, because it came off. And this time we're going to use this flux. done that from the start that worked out nicely I don't see any shorts but I'll inspect it closer in a minute I'm just gonna flip it over do the other side Soldering iron. Need to put a new 
brass sponge in there. And this one is nothing but shorts. Okay. Everything but one strand. How fascinating! So these don't all have to actually be soldered to the board, but they definitely have to not be shorted to each other. However, I recommend, of course, soldering all of them if you can. It's probably easier that way than just selectively picking and choosing. Um, but with how many pads there are, it should make it a little bit stronger. But I suppose it's kind of irrelevant with that bracket, holding everything together. I don't know, don't listen to me, I fucked it up the first time. Looks good. Let's test it out. Where did I put my multimeter? Uh, put it back. First, before I do that, let me see if this one's shorted again. Okay, none of the pins are shorted to each other. Flip that to the lead. That's working. And clip that to data plus. Or is it data minus? It's data minus. Should be shorted to nothing else. Indeed. Now it's clipped to data plus. Good enough. And nothing else. Let's clip to voltage. Good enough. And in case anyone's wondering why my multimeter was reading a different value, let's just check ground real quick. That's good. Yeah. Why it was reading a different value for the data pins than it was for the voltage pins, even though it should be the same. It's because I have a cheap ass multimeter that changes, you know, anywhere from it's this is basically ohm mode. You know, it's checking the resistance. In fact, I guess if I put it on 200 ohms, it's a little bit more accurate. It's basically the 2000 ohm setting. And there's basically two ohms of resistance across my leads, or one, depending on how good contact I'm making. And I, this is a really shitty wire, and I had it clipped on to those 
really short ends really, really poorly. Okay, that's good. Put the molten heat to our scythe for now. Let's try the header pins again. Trying to make it easier on myself in the future if I ever have to use those long ones. Because it's easier when they're all in one string. If you need all of them, then not. Okay. This side up. Solder that onto my disk. bit much solder on the ground. But should be good enough. Okay. That goes on like that because we want it in the middle. Oh let me put on the hat. The bracket here. Put that off. Put that on. Let's get these soldered down. So I guess it's a good thing that there's all that extra solder on the ground. Here I am going way the hell out of frame because uh, it's holding it in place so I don't have to. I'm going to turn my soldering iron up to solder this stupid thing. It sinks so much heat. it out again. So that's ground. That should also be ground. That should be not connected. That should be like 600-ish ohm. No? The hell? What's the difference? Why aren't you working? Ooh, that's actually a really shitty joint. Let me turn that back on. There we go. So there is a difference between continuity and just ohms. Oops. Oh well, that looks right. Now... So those joints look good. Now we're done with the soldering iron. Oops, let me just throw this all around. Put the solder away. Put that away. And I'll bet it works just fine now. Ta da! Check it upside down. Ta-da! So, let that be a lesson in uh, troubleshooting. After you put it together, double check your uh, solder joints. I'm just going to put it together one more time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to set this thing aside and clean this gross thing. 
since it's apart, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take hot water, an old toothbrush, and some soap and scrub this bad boy down. I will be back in, I don't know, a few hours, I guess, because i got to let it dry. Through the miracle of editing and free next day shipping, I have both cleaned the shell and received plenty of 5.1k ohm resistors. Um, seriously, I don't know what the heck's going on with Arrow right now, but they're offering free next day shipping. This cost me 25 cents for 100 resistors. I ordered it Sunday night, today is Tuesday. I received them early this afternoon. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna complain. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get these soldered so I can just double check that it's working as far as with a USB-C host goes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together and we should be all good to go. Um, these things are designed for a, a machine, not exactly a human, as far as this uh, cut tape packaging goes. And these things are impressively small. These are 0603 resistors. I'm going to go ahead and try and solder these on. I'm going to rest this on my multi-tool here to give me a stable platform to work with. And let's get started. All right. Luckily, it does not matter which way these things go on. Put them in either direction. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tin both these pads, the bottom pads of both resistors, and uh, just do these one at a time, just like this. All right, that's one. I'm going to try and flip it over. Just make it pretty. That's probably not going to happen because I just lost it. There it is. A good set of tweezers. Oh, you know what? I actually do have tweezers. Aha. They are brand new even. Let's see how well these work. Oh yeah, that's actually a lot easier. So yes, highly recommend tweezers here. Uh, it helps if you uh, don't drop the part though. There we go. Not to be pretty. Just has to work. I'm going to do the other side. That should do it. My multimeter, double check. Always good to double check your work before plugging it in, that is. Uh, I'm going to set this to ohms. It should be 5.1k. Let's see if I can actually connect up to that trace. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, it's this one. Yeah. Eh, maybe I was just making bad contact. That's probably fine. I can't exactly get my probes in there to 
check properly. So that should be good. What I'm going to do is I've got my phone, which should serve as a USB-C host. Let me just unlock it. Though it's probably going to tell me to kick rocks. Let's find out. Oh, it's not at all what I expected. Well, yeah, unsupported device. But you can see the lights are blinking, which means it successfully negotiated power from my phone, which is exactly what those resistors should do. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it, maybe. That way. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. So to clean this up, all I did was stick it in a bath of warm water and soap, and I uh, scrubbed it down with an old toothbrush and left it to dry for about 24 hours. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. But it should be good to go. It's had plenty of time to dry now. the buttons back in. These are all keyed so they only go in the one slot in one direction except for start and select which will go in either slot but only in the proper orientation. One is just the flip side of the other. Uh, even this little guide ring can only go in one way despite it being pretty much symmetrical. Right. I even cleaned off these little pads here. Let's go on there. And, ooh, I forgot about this. That goes in that way. And then this snaps down. And there are a couple small screws. Hopefully I didn't lose. Pretty sure it's these two. And I did put my screwdriver away. Okay. This, oh no, that bit is way too big. Sorry, excuse me for a moment. While I double check, yeah. All right. So even though it snaps in, there's still these little Phillips screws in there that hold it down. Now there are two types of Xbox 360 controller. Uh, well, obviously other than wired and wireless. Um, there's the like new style D-pad, which they, they call it a transformer or something stupid like that transforming D-pad. I have one on my other controller. It's like this. You can, like the pad itself, you can see kind of, kind of sticks up, but you can turn it and that'll make it like the old style. It doesn't change how it plays or feels at all. All it does is change how it looks. This doesn't have a this doesn't go together the same way as this one. You just drop it in the hole and it's good to go. But it requires a different top plate. It doesn't work with the old style tops. Which I guess is both a good and a bad thing because if you have a new style top, it means you have to pair it with a new style D-pad. Or if you have a new style D-pad, you know, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Luckily, this stuff is available, most of it is available on AliExpress or eBay if that's your go-to. Alright, drop this in there, oh, wait, forgetting a piece. Put the shoulder buttons and this little bottom shield in. Sorry if that was out of frame. Paying more attention to the work 
from the filming of said work. You know, I had this problem last time where it didn't quite snap together and then the shoulder buttons fell out. I'm not sure what it is with this controller. Or if it's just me. It's probably just me. There we go. Now you have your rumble motors. One of them's a lot bigger than the other. Not 100% sure which one goes where, and I've forgotten since I took this apart. But I'm going to go by the Q. In other words, I left one to the left and one to the right. So chances are pretty good the one to the left goes on the left. And if not, oh well. Shouldn't really make that big of a difference. All right, now I need to pop on the back. And something's not lining up here. Oh yeah, I forgot to trim those. So you gotta trim these, uh, trim these little leads off. And then, it's just the seven flip screws. You know, in hindsight, it makes sense that my Microsoft controller doesn't work on my Sony phone. If I recall correctly, that's like one of the only phones that actually comes with uh, like DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 drivers built in so you could use a Sony controller with it. I'm pretty sure the new wireless Bluetooth Xbox One controllers work with it. I have not tested that for two reasons. One, because I don't really play games on my phone. I have plenty of Game Boys for that. But two, and this is the important one, because I don't actually have one of those controllers. Okay, so that is back together. I'm going to turn the light off so we can all see. Well, so you guys can see. I can see fine with the light on. And I'm going to plug it into my laptop right here. Sorry, the cord's a little short. And that works that way. Let me flip it around. And it works that way. How about that? And there's the mod. Easy peasy. All right, so yeah, as you can see, uh, there were some issues and that's why I didn't really release the video or, uh, well, I, we did put the mod out there, but I. I don't know, I just kind of gave up on the video. But anyway, I just wanted to show off now that I have a better phone. Uh, I have a Microsoft Lumia 950 and this has a USB Type-C host on it, but we can check with my old version of the mod. If we go ahead and plug this in, we get nothing on the controller, as expected, because this one doesn't have those resistors. But this one does have those resistors, the mod, the controller we just built. And... Uh, Oh man, I swear it was working. There it goes. So yeah, this is this is part of the problem, part of why uh, we never really did anything with the mod. It's just not reliable. But once you've got it plugged in, you know it does it does work. I mean, not that you'd really want to use it on a uh, Microsoft phone, but. 
I figure it's better for testing than my uh, Sony Xperia because this was at least based on Windows 10 and has the drivers baked right in. Uh, but yeah, it does work, but obviously there's some reliability issues. My old one, the prototype that I made, I do actually regularly use this controller, if you couldn't tell from the Xbox 360 video I just made. Um, whereas this one literally just sits around and does nothing. And it did work perfectly fine when I made that video, as you can see, and I haven't used it since, so I don't know why it stopped working. Uh, but yeah, just, just so you're aware, there are some reliability issues. And I think, as I might have started explaining in the video, the problem is the port itself. If you take a look here, you plug a cable in and you put any force on the cable whatsoever, it's it's uh, torquing these solder joints right here. And they just, either the joints break or the pads lift off the board. Um, but either way, the result is your mod stops working. Now, a solid plastic bezel can help significantly with that as opposed to printing in like a softer plastic like TPU or something. But the problem is with how, with how big the port is and how much space we have, there's really not a whole lot of other options. There are some ports that like solder to, a, to the PCB, as you can see with this port, the PCB goes almost all the way to the edge, but that wouldn't work here unless we made the bezel significantly different. Like if we widened up the opening and then shaved more out of the controller, it, maybe it could work, but it's, it's not going to look as good. Uh, there are other ports like this that might work a little bit better because, I mean, I suppose we don't have to use that front mount, but, you know, the more you start modifying it, the less reliable it's going to be. Uh, so, I don't know, if anyone has any suggestions, I'd love to improve this mod, but as is, I just, I don't think it's, I think it has a little bit of work before it's ready for a, uh, ready for full time, I think. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed that, I hope it wasn't too terrible. Um, like I said, old camera, poor lighting, bad sound, stuff like that, uh, but I think it's still usable. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe. Have a good night.